I do get to test a lot of photo equipment to see if it's of interest to our Discover Mirrorless as well as ShootSmarter.com audience. And I do have to admit that from time to time, I get a product that comes in that I'm not super excited about right off the bat. One such product is the Mi Photo line of tripods. They're small, lightweight, very inexpensive, and they come in kind of cute colors that makes the girl photographers around here just all excited because they think they're really cute. Well, that's all well and good, but it's got to work well too, right? They come in two sizes. The smaller is called the back packer and the larger of the two is called the road trip. Now I've tested these to find out are they of use to me as a hybrid photographer that's moving from DSLR into mirrorless. I need a tripod that can travel with me better than maybe some of the other travel tripods can. So let's take the MiPhoto tripods and give them an audition to see if they can be useful in the world of Crockett. He's Will Crockett. He's a pro photographer, owner, and chief tech advisor of a few large photo websites. He's worked as a consultant with some huge companies in the photo industry. And he even gets to present some of his photo training expertise to the great men and women at the Pentagon. Now he's focusing on smarter ways to shoot and share hybrid imaging as he guides you into discovering mirrorless. Okay, one of the things we think of when we're packing our equipment to go on a photo shoot is, what are we gonna need for cameras, lenses, lights, flash meters, pop-up cards, whatever. One of the things that we all struggle with is, ah, oh, do I really need to bring a tripod or not? Most tripods, particularly for folks that are shooting pro-level DSLRs, mean, well, if I'm going to shoot that 70-200 to f2.8 lens, I'm going to need a tripod, right? Yeah, I know. And if we're going to shoot product shots, for instance, like we shoot a lot of product shots, we're going to need a tripod for that too. Traveling with a tripod, even if you've got the best, lightest carbon fiber tripod in a perfect case, can always be a hassle. And it's the tripod you have with you that's the best one, right? There's nothing worse than being out on a job and realizing, nuts, I should have brought that tripod. Well, my thought is that if I can find the highest tech, forget about what it costs, coolest tripod that will fit into a camera case and not even remind me that it's there, that's the tripod that I want. I typically use two different kinds of cases. I'll use a roll along for my camera cases that'll hold a couple of cameras and bodies and I want to be able to dig a little deep and guess what? That's right, I want to put a tripod right there. Then there are other times where I'm going to use a larger shoulder bag or sometimes a backpack and I want the ability to put in a camera and a few less lenses but I also want to put in a tripod there. The physical space of course inside that case is limited but more importantly it's all about the weight for me. Then I want to be able to pull that tripod out get it to work. I found out that I'm very successful with the Mi Photo both sizes. I take the smaller one, the backpacker, and that will go in any case that's going to be mounted either as a backpack or as a shoulder bag. Then, if I'm going to have my roll along camera case, it, particularly if that's going to go with me on an airplane or something, if I need to put it into the overhead storage bin, I got to have it nice and lightweight and I find out that the next size up that's going to be their road trip works perfectly inside the case. So for me, taking a tripod is now no longer an issue. The question is, do I go back and take my big tripods if I'm going to be shooting big shots? This is a lot of big talk about small tripods. Remember, two models we're talking about here. The backpacker is the smaller of the two. Get it? It fits in a backpack. The road trip is the larger of the two, but it's not very large. I am told, by the way, there's some more different models coming. Anyway, the two that we have are both pretty small. Let's start with the smallest, the backpacker. When we fold it up, it's only 15 inches. Less than 13. Oh, sorry, less than 13 inches tall. And then when we open up the backpacker, it goes? 51 inches. 51 inches tall. That's a pretty big range, right? What's it weigh? Two and a half pounds. There you go, two and a half pounds. Then the one that I use a little bit more is the Road Tripper. Now it is 15 and a half inches tall. Touch over 15. There you go, it's a little over 15 inches tall when it's its smallest. And then when it's its biggest, it's a little over 61 inches and it weighs just under, well, lots under four pounds. It's about three and a half pounds. Three and a half. There you go, three and a half pounds. Certified by Louie. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now that I'm shooting more hybrid photo assignments, I'm going to have to shoot still photos as well as video plus audio at a moment's notice. If I'm working in a corporate event, for instance, and I'm covering it hybrid, I'm using long lenses, short lenses, I'm also using the monopod more than I thought to stabilize those lenses. This means that I want the ability to convert my tripod to a monopod so I don't have to travel with both, right? That's what's drawing me to the larger of the two me photos. Here's how it works. I'm just going to unscrew one of the legs, not all of them come apart, just one of them comes apart and that gives me a nice foam grip here as well as the legs, right? Then I can unscrew the bottom of the column just like this and then I'll just loosen up the top section that allows me to attach these two and away I go. It's really that quick. I can do this in 36 seconds comfortably by not even paying attention to it, right? Once you get used to it, uh, the balance of it, you know, it's all really kind of smart. You can do it while you're talking to, a, to your customer or to your subject. But the question is, can our intern do it? Louie. Louis McChewy, the world's worst photo assistant because he's a college intern. Let's give him 30 seconds, and if he doesn't get it done in 30 seconds, we will give him a high voltage electric shot. Another part about the Mi Photo tripods that I'm experiencing that I had no idea was going to come my way. Now that we're moving from the big DSLR cameras into the smaller mirrorless cameras, that in itself is a bit of a conversation starter, right? When a corporate client, really, they don't care what camera I'm using, they just trust me to gather the images that I'm hired to shoot, right? When they see me with a smaller, lighter camera, I, I use mirrorless cameras, in fact, a lot. I always have the black ones, right? I don't have any funny colored ones. Sometimes they pick up on the fact that that's a different or smaller camera and they ask about it, and for me, that's a good thing. I do not see, at least with my clients, that me using a smaller mirrorless camera looks non-professional or whatever. All right, maybe for you it is, but my clients will say, wow, what's that? Wow, this is the latest, greatest in camera technology that allows me to photograph still images as well as video. Well, that icebreaker, we love that. Anytime we get the chance to talk on the set about photography, the more opportunity it is for me to present my level of professionalism, right? These tripods with the funny colors are conversation starters. Imagine if I've got a suit and a tie on and I have to go photograph some suit and tie type of folks and I'm using a regular looking mirrorless camera, I have the ability to start a conversation with a bright blue tripod. I know, crazy, right? Imagine a guy my size, I'm over six feet tall, I'm a big boy. Could you imagine seeing me dressed up in a corporate environment with a bright blue or a bright yellow tripod? I'm telling you, that conversation starter is a plus. Well, shooting with a blue tripod's one thing, but something tells me if I were to show up with a pink tripod and a matching pink set of light stands, we would have a conversation of a different nature. Right? She agrees. <laughs> Sure, we all want to save money when it comes to adding tools to our photo kit, but we also need to keep in mind that value is something that's maybe even more important. So when I see tripods like the Backpacker that retail for 140 bucks and with the head and a case, and then I see the Road Trip that retails around 230 bucks with a matching head with the case, I'm thinking, man, that's that's not a lot of money. So I was a little nervous trying these tripods with my style and the fact that I. I'm not gentle on my equipment whatsoever. Is this really going to hold up? And am I going to get the value for my money? The answer is yes. In fact, I think that these tripods may actually be underpriced for what you get. These are not the world's most durable tripods, and they are a little cute, and they are metallic, and they will get scuffed. But the fact that we've got the convertible version on the larger of the two gives it an even more incredible value, because now it's a tripod as well as a monopod for less than 250 bucks. Excellent value. Hey, we got to talk about something important here. Yes, these tripods are fine for mirrorless cameras, all sizes and shapes. Large point and shoot cameras, right? When we're talking about small, lightweight DSLRs with small, lightweight lenses, these are fine. 
don't go putting your big Nikon D800 up on top of here with a 7200 f2.8 lens. It's not, that's not what these are made for. The friction inside the ball heads on these are fine for smaller, lighter weight, less mass cameras. But trust me, once you put a big heavy camera up there, yeah, it'll stay up there. When you start tipping that ball head over a little bit, wham, it's going to fall forward. Don't do that to your camera. That's way too harmful for your camera. If you're going to shoot a big camera with a big lens, you need a big tripod. These ain't big tripods. When you first pick up one of these Mi Photo tripods, you realize, wow, these are rugged and they're tight. And then when you start opening up the legs, it has a really great tactile response. It's got just enough friction to make you think, wow, that's a real quality little hinge inside there. But as soon as you start opening up these legs, you think, oh no, this is flimsy and this isn't going to work. And you start losing confidence that this is going to be able to hold up your camera. And guess what? Once you get all the legs extended and and you put a camera up on top of it. The weight, even though it's a small camera, the weight of that camera will firm this tripod up right away. I'm going to take it one step further by taking my camera case and I'm going to use this handy little hook on the bottom to add that little bit extra weight to make this feel even better. One thing about the Mi Photos I'm really not happy about. I took these tripods out to the desert for a week and I found that they don't have the sandproof and grit proof seals on the legs like our bigger more expensive tripods do. So if you're flopping in and out of the beach, this ain't gonna work. Camera supports like tripods and monopods and camera stands are one of the things that separate a pro photographer from a non-pro photographer and can separate a good shot from a great shot. I say that because as we get older and we're using full-size DSLRs with 70 to 200 f2.8 lenses or heaven forbid we were bust out the 300 millimeter f2.8 lenses for Nikons and Canons, that gets a little tedious to hang on to after a long day. I just want to make sure that I've got that tripod with me and if I'm able to carry it along that it doesn't slow me down. This is Maya. She says the downside of using a tripod that goes into your camera case is that if you use it somewhere and it gets muddy feet, of course she knows all about having muddy feet, you'll have to put the tripod into a plastic bag, then put the tripod in the plastic bag inside your camera case so you don't get a mess all over the place and get yelled at by your mom, right? Not dad, mom, mom. Yeah, she says right. So when you see somebody like me talking about, all right, these cute little tripods really are a good value and they work well and they're something that you should consider, it almost sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Well, it's not too good to be true. These are not the world's greatest tripods, but they are a terrific tool for photographers that are moving into that world of hybrid, right? Shooting photo plus video anytime, anywhere means we're going to need camera supports. Plus, the fact that they come in all those different colors is great. I have a different one for each one of my outfits. Just having fun with you. Thanks from Crockettville. Bye. Become a smarter hybrid photographer every day. New posts placed up on discovermirrorless.com, 6 a.m. Eastern Time, every day of the week.